Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the second and final day of Asta's Plant Breeding Innovations Media Tour. That video you just saw was filmed with Jesse Alt, who is a real life mom, home gardener, and plant breeder, more specifically, wheat breeder, with Corteva AgriSciences, one of Asta's member companies. We have a great agenda lined up for you today, so we'll get right to it. First, this morning, we're going to hear from representatives of Bayer about a collaborative approach to breeding for growers and consumers using peppers as an example. Our speakers today are Dr. J.D. Rousseau, Head of Vegetable Research and Development, and Dr. Murad Ebendaber, Head of America's Vegetable Breeding and Testing. Just a reminder to please type your questions in the chat box throughout the program, and we'll bring our speakers in live to answer those after the presentations. So Dr. Rousseau and Ebendaber, I'll hand it over to you. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Jay Duris. So I'm the senior vice president and the head of global vegetable R&D. I've been with Bayer Crop Scientists for about 22 years in various parts of our global business. I bring a passion for plant breeding and science to the way we actually innovate, disrupt and develop our products, but also solutions to our growers and customers just like you. I'm really excited about our global vegetable R&D. Um, design engine and for a couple of reasons. The one is we truly have the most diverse global germplasm library in the world for our key crops. That allows us to do two things. First of all, it allows us to look for find solutions globally for local conditions. For example, disease resistance. We can actually leverage our global germplasm library to find solutions for what you need in the US or in North America specific around disease. The second piece about our global germplasm library is the fact that we have the opportunity to continuously innovate and find new solutions for current and future challenges that our customers, US growers might face. For example, labor shortage, cl climate shift and changes or new farming practices. We have global collaborative breeding pipelines set up for our key crops around the world. This creates the opportunity for us to breed global but then deploy local based on the local conditions that our products need to fit to provide solutions to our customers, US growers. We test our products in about 31 countries just for peppers around the world. We have the opportunity then to deploy about 20 plus new varieties every single year around the world in our pepper portfolio. And that allows us then to have a robust commercial portfolio across 100 plus countries of about 300 varieties. For our different crops, we have a global trialing or field testing footprint, which allows us to use data from around the world to be able to make better decisions within our breeding pipelines by our breeders and scientists. For example, we test our peppers at 30, 31 countries around the world. Um, we have about a, a thousand plus unique testing locations where we generate data. And then also we're working on a high throughput phenotyping platform to deliver new data and insight for images and sensors based on our products in the field and using that data with our plant breeders and scientists to make those recommendations on what to advance and how to position them with our growers. So a grower in the southeast US can benefit from our global testing by the ability that our breeders have to bring the data together from around the world to better position the product in his or her farm in the southeast US. We have a new product design center in San Nicolas, Spain that we developed for the purpose of generating new varieties and inbreds much faster through the use of advanced technologies. This facility that just got operational the end of 2020 allows us now to bring products to market at least one to two years earlier. In pepper specific, it allows us our US programs to again bring products to life quicker um, for our US um, commercial growers. We are very uniquely positioned to have the most aggressive and broadest screening of diseases for peppers around the world. We test about 15 different diseases and pests in our, in our field testing operation and lab facilities to address the needs of growers. We also have about 20 different traits in our commercial portfolio and in our pre-commercial portfolio specifically for pepper globally. Hi, my name is uh, Murat Abdenader. I'm the head of uh, breeding and testing in Veg R&D. My name is Tyler Eckerd and I am the head of America's Soul Nation Breeding at Bear Crop Science. Breeding pepper focus on different traits. Of course, yield is always a key component, but uh, we also focus in our breeding effort on the taste. For hot pepper, pungency is very important. The heat of the pepper is important. We, we see that the, the consumer uh, is becoming more global, but every uh, geography has a different uh, appreciation for the taste. Uh, so we focus on that uh, 
consumer uh, aspect for uh, the product that we bring into the market. Likewise, color, shape, uh, for the firmness of the, of the craft uh, is important. Uh, another aspect that we look at is the holding capacity of the feed and the synchronization of maturity, which allows us for more automation of harvest, which is something that the processor in particular uh, are asking for. We start our uh, breeding effort by creating parental lines, uh, and there we bring germoplasm, the different germoplasm together. We leverage our genotyping platform to drive trait integration, uh, traits such as disease resistance. So we bring them into that parental line. As the needs of growers and consumers change, it is critical that our breeding programs are able to rapidly adapt to meet those needs with new and improved pepper varieties. At Bayer, we are implementing cutting-edge technologies to deliver better products to our customers at a rate faster than ever before. As an example, consumer preference for jalapenos has shifted towards varieties that are smooth and non-cracking. In order to bring these new varieties to our growers and consumers as quickly as possible, we leverage double haploid and genomic selection. Using double haploids, we are able to develop inbred lines from new breeding crosses without the multiple years of selfing it would take to go through conventional breeding. Then with genomic selection, we leverage genomic data on the new double haploid lines to predict which lines will produce hybrids without fruit cracking before we ever see the plants in the field. This way we can get the right genetics into our pipeline as quickly as possible to meet grower and consumer demands. Uh, hybrid assessment and testing is very important. We test in different environment. We try to test in the environment where the growers are uh, growing our hybrids and products. Uh, we also try to leverage environmental data to make sure that we understand the interaction between the germoplasm and the environment. And most recently, the data is also leveraged to understand how we can manage the crop better. So there is the germoplasm, its interaction with the environment, but there's also the interaction with the cropping and the management uh, system that the growers are using. So all of this is really uh, facilitated by the amount of data that we generate either in the, our breeding nurseries or in uh, the, the testing footprint that we have across different mega environments. Here at Bayer, we are committed to developing products that provide solutions for growers, customers, and consumers. Our products are characterized by high productivity, fruit quality, adaptability to biotic and abiotic stresses. For example, bacterial leaf spot is a major challenge faced by pepper growers across the Americas. Through our customer focus and innovation, our breeding teams at Bayer were able to be the first to develop and provide pepper hybrids with X10R resistance providing resistance to all races of the pathogen. And we do this while improving yield and quality for our growers and consumers. In addition to ensuring our products hold up in the field, it is also critical that we understand the palates and preferences of our consumers so that we can provide desirable products to the dinner table. We have teams focused on understanding consumer preference and characterizing the composition and flavor of our products for example, our hot pepper program must provide quality traits to meet a broad spectrum of consumer preferences. And our teams exhaustively characterize and select for the desired pungency level, shape, size, and taste to meet each specific market's demands. So first of all, our breeding starts by defining the product concept. And that product concept is driven by what do the growers or the, the shippers, the packer need from this product. So we understand the attributes that we bring uh, in our product. Sustainability is a very important factor of all what we do. We try to bring hybrids that withstand diseases or withstand the lack of uh, water and fertilizer, so, or that can valorize better water and fertilizers. Uh, we also focus on the quality. Uh, the growers sometimes they are approaching market where uh, quality attributes are more important than yield. So in our breeding effort, we focus on bringing high yielding hybrid, but also with higher high quality quality that meet the, the customer and the consumer demands. Uh, my name is Luther Carson, and for the past six years, I've been a technology development representative 
for Semenis vegetable seeds. Um, as a technology development representative, I take new hybrids from breeding and research each year and I trial them directly with my growers in my region to test the hybrids under their conditions. We place trials with growers because there's no better place to trial a hybrid than in the location where it's going to be grown. And when we partner with growers, we want to get them to the field to see the new hybrids and talk about them. And we use those thoughts in our advancement decisions. It's important to have relationships with these growers because I want our products to meet their needs so that they can be successful for years to come. One thing I'm excited about in our pepper program are the robust disease packages that we can provide, especially in a crop work like red bell peppers where they have to sit in the field for a while and we can stack in nematode resistance and powdery mildew resistance. And so one of the things that make any R&D organization successful, including ours, is the fact that we have a very diverse innovative, passionate and experienced are in the organization and that cover people that are plant breeders, data scientists, sensory scientists, pathologists, engineers and agronomists. These folks around the world help us deliver our products with passion to our growers and find those local solutions. I'm happy to talk with two members of Bayer Vegetable Seeds Consumer R&D Department, Dr. Martin Rubelt, our global lead, and Dr. Chiaoming Li, our sensory scientist. These researchers can help us understand the importance of keeping consumers top of mind as we develop new pepper varieties. Martin, please share some insights from the perspective of consumers. There's several important consumer trends. Two stand out. The consumer wants to know where their produce is coming from and how it was produced. And the consumer is getting more demanding when it comes to quality of produce. That means better appearance, better taste and flavor profile, and also higher nutritional value. Especially during the pandemic, consumers are more concerned about eating healthy and what they can do to boost their immune system to stay healthy. Well, what is Bayer doing to address these consumer trends? Bayer develops differentiated products the consumer loves and enjoys eating. Consumers are looking for delicious and nutritious vegetables. Vegetables need also to be fun, colorful and easy to be consumed. One of the fastest growing segments are snacking sized vegetables, snacking tomatoes and snacking peppers. For example, our just sweet pointed peppers have an outstanding taste. My kids love to eat them when I bring them home from our trials. It's a myth that kids don't like vegetables. They just don't like bad tasting vegetables. Taste is in all consumer studies a number one purchasing driver. Therefore, we spend a lot of effort to understand consumers' preference to assure we develop pepper varieties the consumer really wants. Dr. Lee leads our global consumer sensory team and can elabor elaborate on that. Consumers are our number one focus when it comes to developing better tasting varieties. You and I are consumers. We decide how much we like a product in microseconds. The amazing part is it all happens subconsciously. We use all our senses, vision, aroma, taste, texture, hearing, etc. Not only the decision is subconscious, it is also holistic. That means the brain combines all the feedback from the senses and form one judgment. Like it? Or I want more of it. We test with consumers globally because we understand it is important to know the local preference. Different countries may differ in their preferences. A positive feature in one country may be negative feature in another country and vice versa. Well Talk to us about peppers specifically. So can you give an example of pepper product development? Some time ago, our breeder discovered a yellow pepper variety that has a unique shape, color, and taste. Well, because it is unlike a typical pepper variety, the team decided we need the consumer's feedback on this. We then conducted a large-scale consumer study in a geographical area of the selling uh, region. The outcome was consumers love it. 
The yellow pointer pepper variety called Just Sweet is the perfect snack for consumers. Sweet, flavorful, juicy, and convenient. And more importantly, local. Subsequently, we launched the variety by working closer with the grower. Martin, what about the importance of nutrition? Vegetables are inherently healthy and nutritious, and pepper is certainly an excellent example for that. Peppers are low in calories and loaded with good nutrition. They are excellent sources of vitamin C, A and E, potassium, folic acid and fiber, to just mention a few. Enticing the consumer to eat more peppers and all the other vegetables will have a big impact on health and nutrition. Bayer Vegetable Seeds is perfectly positioned to advance health and nutrition by understanding consumers' preferences and deliver vegetable varieties the consumer really loves and desires. Remember, our vision is health for all, hunger for none. That's what we are striving for. Thank you. Thanks so much for that great presentation. Um, Doctors Rousseau and Abendotter, I'll have you up here to come and answer some questions. I see quite a few coming in. Um, Good morning, Thanks for uh, inviting us this morning. Look forward to the conversation. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for being here. So while I'm gathering the questions, I just I had a question of my own to set the stage. So how quickly are you able to bring a product to market compared to 10 to 20 years ago? And what changes have you seen over that time? Yeah, so maybe I can I can answer that question quickly. So th the way that that plant breeding has done across multiple crops, including uh, peppers, is really to think about on working on processes and how we can speed up the product development cycle. So the way plant breeding works is we make up individual populations and crosses, and then we put it through an inbreeding process and a testing um, process over several years to test our products under the right grower environment or home gardener environment, and then the products that we really properly test to market. And that process depends on the crop and the world region, take anything from eight all the way to 15 years. So that the changes we've seen over the last few years is that breeding companies and plant breeders are working on reducing that timeline from product development, development crosses to the end product hitting the growers uh, commercial portfolio. The, uh, the technologies that we've been working on the last few years within the plant breeding space is all geared to reducing that product development um, cycle in our, our plant breeding programs. And the reason for doing it is the ability for us then to quicker respond to market trends based on what the end consumer uh, needs or what the home gardeners and growers need around product. For example, if there is a new breakout of a disease, we can respond much quicker by bringing in resistance. If there is a shift, for example, what Martin mentioned on, on snackable peppers, we can easily address that market need or gap or opportunity to bring products to life. Great, thank you. So I have a lot of questions about taste and heat. So first of all, can you tell us more about how you select for heat in a pepper? Sure, maybe I can take that. And uh, uh, you know, letting out what JD said, thank you for inviting us today. Really, we're, we're happy to answer your questions. So, uh, you know, the selection for heat can be either based on, uh, uh, you know, on the co consumer panels. So consumer who are known to, uh, to have a good taste for heat. So we, we use that. Uh, and most recently, we, we started using some analytical method to select for heat and we have a state for classifying our hybrid uh, according to, uh, to, the, to the level of uh, pungency, which is a combination, it's a very complex uh, trait, as a matter of fact, it, it includes spiciness, but also the, the heat. Uh, and it is a bit also subjective because, you know, consumer in Mexico will have different appreciation from a consumer in the southeast of the US, or myself I, I, is from Tunisia, my appreciation for heat uh, what I call hot or spicy is different from what the uh, jalapenos pepper uh, uh, tastes uh, in in Mexico. So our, our method is to apply really both the analytical, uh, the uh, chemistry-based method, but also to continue relying on local consumer panel to assess uh, the, per, the 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 pungency and the appreciation of that consumer of the consumer that are really regional. To, to our hybrids. 
Great. So, and going along with that, so you kind of spoke to it that it seems to be regionally, uh, there's preferences across regions, but do you see any general trends? Are consumers asking for hotter peppers than what is available today? I think what's available today serves the need of a diverse uh, consumer uh, community. Uh, what we see is that is uh, because we, are, we move more, pre-COVID, of course, we, we used to move a lot. And you can see that the taste has evolved. Uh, I remember when I was uh, living in Tunisia, as I said, and I traveled to, to Europe, I can notice that the, the European, the least, they eat less hot pepper, for example, or spicy food. When I started, you know, in the past years, I can notice that the European, for instance, they have more appreciation for, for that food because there are more, you know, people who moved around the world. So we, we can see that uh, demand for hot pepper and for the pungency is increasing in a way. Uh, there is more demand for that compared, at least my personal experience, compared to uh, 10, 20 years ago. Uh, with that, you know, we need to, to calibrate the hybrid that we are developing for the, the geography where there is a tolerance for a very uh, spicy uh, pepper or for mildly spicy pepper. So if you look to uh, in Asia, maybe the tolerance for the spiciness is, is higher compared to Europe or the Western Hemisphere. Yeah, maybe just that. I think what, what uh, consumers want is really choice, correct? If I look at my situation as well, I, I want choice, I want to experiment, I want to try new flavors, especially when you think about, as Murad mentioned, being part of a global community. And I think that that variation and options we want to see right through the year in our kitchens, correct? So it's really, really important to focus on those trends. And, and there are a trend to, to get things more spicy and, and more potent. And, and where, where do Seminus hot peppers rank on that heat scale? And are you working on peppers on the same range as something like a ghost pepper or a Carolina Reaper? Yeah, I, I cannot tell you exactly where, where we stand compared to, uh, to other, but uh, I know that we tend to a diverse uh, and a global uh, you know, the, the demand. So if you look at our program in Asia, well, we, we rank pretty well compared to other hybrids in that region. Likewise, in Mexico, be it our jalapenos, anchos, serranos, you know, we, we look at uh, the punchiness and try to be uh, tending to, to the different demands of, uh, uh, of the consumer uh, community. Uh, in terms of uh, de developing new types, we are all, always looking at the, the market trend, the market demand, and trying to, to meet that uh, expectation. Great. So for those people who might not like the spicy peppers, um, in terms of sweet peppers, what are you looking for in terms of flavor? Yeah, uh, again, uh, it's the, the sweetness. So, uh, and of course, sweet pepper, uh, the, the longer you, you leave it on the vine, the, the sweeter it becomes, correct? And the more vitamin C it brings. But uh, we're looking at ways to, to bring that sweetness and that uh, high uh, vitamin C content, even if you, if you harvest early, for example. Uh, back to what Martin was saying, the snacking pepper is, we, we see it as a very interesting uh, segment. Uh, what we feel like probably is going to uh, represent uh, a new consumer trend, and we have uh, we are very actively breeding to to bring snacking pepper that is sweet, uh, but also probably w with less seeds, so so that uh, that experience is better for the consumer. Maybe just uh, the other component that we also focus on is the, um, the the actual storability of 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 peppers. Correct, making sure that from the point that the grower actually harvests it, and and we need to pack it and ship it. And when it gets to our kitchen, correct, this, the, the product actually maintains its freshness, et cetera, because that's really important from, if you think about sustainability and food security, and just food waste for us in the U.S., it becomes really, really important. And again, if you step outside of the U.S. into Africa and Asia and those regions, the, the, the shelf life and that durability of the product to be stay fresh becomes really, really important from a food security more than a food waste perspective. Well, that's a good that's a good segue. I know you mentioned sustainability and and food waste. So are there, you know, can you expand on that a little bit about what you're doing in that space and then any other new or novel traits for peppers that you're working on? Yeah, so we, we focus quite a bit around sustainability. Um, I mean, as a company uh, and several of our our um, competitors as well, there's been a big shift the last, I would say, two years to be much more responsible from a sustainability perspective. So the way that we, we try to do sustainability and how we actually embed it in our 
our R&D group and our plant breeding programs in specific is, is in two ways, correct? Is the, how do we manage our operations, correct? Uh, we've got sites around the world. How do we make sure that those sites um, operate in a very sustainable way? We look at, uh, at water, we look at lights, we look at electricity, energy, and but also uh, the, the carbon footprint of our operations. So that's one area we focus around. How do we just be good neighbors in the communities that we have research facilities in? The second piece is we've got a big focus around sustainability for smallholder farmers, bringing technologies to life for them, products that make sense. Again, that food waste component, but that's that's for those developing countries where we have small scale older farmers. And then the space that I'm really excited about that we started working on the last few years is how do we think different from developing, for example, paper varieties if, if you put a sustainability lens on it. So it, again, it's, it's shelf life, things like taste and flavor, um, bringing those components together and actually how we think about designing and breeding these new varieties that can actually help ourselves, but also our customers and end consumers from a sustainability perspective. Very good. Thanks. Maybe to add, maybe to add to what JD is saying, you know, the, there is the component of uh, bringing, uh, uh, you know, products that have longer shelf life. But we, we have also a great track record of uh, creating product and especially pepper that are resistant to uh, to diseases, to pathogens, which leads to less usage of fossil fuel by the fact of uh, the growers now needing less uh, pesticides to uh, to, to bring healthy uh, fruit to the market. Uh, so that's an important uh, component. Uh, I, I will add, we are working on uh, water and uh, fertilizer efficiency. So pepper that can grow uh, with less inputs. Uh, that's part of our pledge to using less fossil fuel. And last but not least, I mean, recently Bayer announced a carbon sequestration initiative, uh, which covers all the facets of our business where we want to really promote carbon credit uh, uh, when the farmer realized that. Great. Are you able to expand on that a little more? Well, well basically, the, the initiative has been announced, and it is on our website, uh, bear.com. Uh, and it talks about you know, uh, encouraging uh, uh, the growers and the farmers to, to adopt no-till or to adopt cover crop. And as they realize carbon credit, we will incentivize them for that. Great, and, and this great. is a pilot. It's a pilot that we are doing both in the U.S. and Brazil, but it's it will be expanded to other geographies as we realize the feasibility. Great, thank you. So back a little bit to flavor here. Someone's asking: Are you developing any low or very low heat peppers that retain the smoky citrus flavor of hot peppers? Yeah, a great question. So again, it goes back to that uh, consumer panels and to what, what, are, what is needed per region. So probably we're not working specifically on the citrus flavor, but that's something that probably I, I would ask the pepper breeder to, to, see, uh, to consider or to see what, what geographies are interested in that. And if, if there is a need, of course, we will address it. Yeah, it sounds like maybe some people are looking for that. Um, and then other than flavor, what are some of the most important um, traits that you've seen consumers are asking for? I think this No, I think the, the, the big one is the, the shift to snackables, correct? So smaller peppers um, with different colors, um, less less seed or no seed, um, and then the crunchiness and again the, the shelf life component. So those are the things we'll be focusing on and and uh, you need to make it fun as as somebody mentioned earlier, you need to make it fun and exciting for our kids to eat it as well, correct? I've got a middle schooler and a high schooler and and um, since I've been more involved with vegetables, that it's a different conversation, correct? And I think the pr produce that we have access to in our kitchens is just making it more fun. And we will continue on that trend as an industry to create exciting ways to, to, to help nutritional, um, the traditional value and the, and the flavor and the taste of our vegetables as we go forward. Excellent. Great. I, I don't see any other questions right now in the chat. Um, but we have a, a couple more minutes, probably time for one or two more if anyone thinks of anything. In the meantime, do you, either of you have anything to add that we haven't covered yet? Yeah, maybe I'll just add that um, the, um, uh, the the one thing that we value really, really around the world is we've got these, these global bring programs set up um, to think about our global germplasm collection and global trends. But then the way we actually parse it down is to make sure that we serve the local 
um, grower because that's where the product needs to be produced, but also the local end consumer, as, as several folks mentioned, because they have unique requirements uh, around what they prefer in the local cuisines, et cetera, and nutrition. So there is a big um, big focus in, in that space. The other space, space that, that we get very passionate about is, is the nutritional space. So how do we actually think about nutrition in a different way when you think about vegetables? Can you combine this and link it to supplement around nutrition, correct? It becomes really an interesting space to really keep people healthy, especially now during COVID and people paying more attention to what they consume. Great, thank you. Yeah, maybe to add to what JD was saying, we have a global collaborative team. So a lot of the, the pepper hybrid that we bring to our market here in the US and in Mexico, uh, they, are, they, they either were developed in Europe and, or Asia, like the initial development, but then we, we find similarity in the environment and, the, uh, and the, the demand from our customers and we expand. And likewise, a lot of the other breeding effort that we do in the US uh, also serves other geographies in, in Europe, Africa and, and Asia. And really uh, the customers and the consumer are our focus. I mean, that's where we start our ideas and, our, uh, and de design our product. And as of late, as I mentioned, sustainability has become a big component of what we do in terms of uh, advancing products that uh, need less to grow. Excellent. Well, thank you both very much. That about wraps up our time that we have. But if anyone does think of any other questions, feel free to email those to us and we will follow up afterwards. Thank you so much um, for your time and the great presentation and discussion. Um, thank you. We'll talk to thank you. you. Later. Okay. Thank you.